Wong, Kahala Yahawa, Pashem Yahushai, Pashem Rukwa Kodash, the waters, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, mercy to the elect, we the house of David reborn again in this generation, and Shalom to the 130 Yashar Rala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the growing new religion which is emerging upon the earth today, and that is the religion of government, right? Well, there's an article we're gonna, I'm going to read uh, from RT, which shows how over the last few years, government and politics, for the most part, have been turned into the new religion um, in America, right? This also coincides with a mass exodus from these organized religions. And why is that? Well, you see the, the spirit that is pushed here in America, which in the Bible is known as Babylon the Great, is a spirit of self-worship, a spirit of, of Satanism, right? Because that's ultimately what self-worshiping is, right? Is to be your own God, right? To, to not believe in a higher power, right? To simply believe that you can fix it, that we can all fix the system, we can save ourselves, right? Basically, you being the God, right? And and what's and what is at the top of that altar? Well, that altar is is an altar in in politics, right? When you hold the president, the the senators, the Congress people, the all politicians and all forms of government, you hold that as the highest power of the land, right? And we've seen that in these last few years, mainly, right, with uh, this guy I just got out of office, Trump, right? This is, he was one of the, uh, the, the, the most polarizing figures, which you have literally seen people out there, you know, worshiping him, man, and even praying to Trump to save them, right? And that's because these people, are made into idols. They're made into figures to be worshipped. Right? And the sad thing is that a lot of our people, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, them being the true Israelites of the Holy Bible, who should literally be worshipping the God of the Bible, right? That's the first commandment of the Ten Commandments written, right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, we literally should be worshipping the God of the Bible, but a lot of our people worship uh, the 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 left side of this bird of this political system, man, the liberal views, right? Well, because of that, because of the idol worshiping, the the worshiping of false gods, right, with a little g here in Babylon the Great, the Lord is going to reject two thirds of our people, right? That means that two out of every three Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians will be put to death because they have refused to return back to the Lord and, and, and uh, you know, worship Him as they are commanded to, right? This is the reason why us Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, are, are put here on earth. Is one is to worship the Lord, right? And, to, and then ultimately to teach the rest of the world how to be in righteous order, right? And that being in, in order of, of worshiping the Lord, how to conduct their lives, and all that stuff. But that isn't happening right now because right now we are living in an upside-down kingdom, the kingdom of the Edomites, right? The so-called Caucasian race. Well, I said all that to read this, right? This is why, ultimately, this prophecy here is going to come true, right? Because the Lord is getting tired of our our people going off, right? And so, so he's going to take two-thirds of our people, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, put them to death, right? He's going to do that in many horrible ways. The plagues, famines, the sword, right? All these stories that you're starting to see now of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians dying, getting put to death, right? Either through natural causes, police, violence, weird, circumstantial, you know, accidental deaths. That's all judgment, right? And the Lord's going to only ramp it up. You're going to continue to see large larger and larger death rates right so much so 
that people are going to start to wake up and they're going to start to realize what's happening. Well, some people that is, right? Because other people, it tells you that in the Bible that even after being scourged by the Lord that they will blame the Lord and they will continue to be rebellious. But this is why this prophecy is going to play out. This is Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore, therefore will I number you to the sword and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called ye, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Right? And what was it, and how did the Lord speak to you Negro Latinos, Native Indians? Well, he spoke to you by by us, the prophets of the Most High, right? The prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, Yahweh being the true Hebrew name of the Most High Father, right? That means that's Hebrew for He is, right? And we've told you, you know, what the truth of the Bible is, you know, starting with Abba Bivens, you know, back in the 60s, all the way to currently, right? Starting with our apostle, the, the true leader of Israel, the Negro Latino Native Indians on the earth today, Apostle Tahar. Right on down to the rest of the apostles, the elders, and all the rest of the prophets here at Great Millstone, and all the other camps that teach uh, what Great Millstone is teaching, right, and hold the apostles in their rightful uh, stead, right. Uh, we have all been out on the streets, highways and byways, right, and uh, you know, telling, telling the people that drive by in cars, walk by, you know, who are the Israelites? What is the true? true uh, image and name of the Lord, you know, what is the truth of the Bible? Well, that's all being declared, right? And this truth is now going out through all the world, right? The, you have great millstone camps all over the world, Japan, Norway, England, Mexico, uh, Alaska, Canada, uh, Af at many places in Africa, Australia, Japan, um, Nor Norway, you know, I think there's one in France too, uh, but basically there's camps all over the world, right? And where there there literally isn't any brothers, the internet's there, so people are getting this message, right? And this this truth, for the most part, is gonna is fulfilling that prophecy, right? That when this truth, you know, uh, reaches the four corners of the earth, then the end shall come, right? And and that's why everything is 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 collapsing right now: the economy, the world, a uh, political system. Just everything is changing now. And why is that? Because we are out there pushing this vibration of the truth of Yahweh Bashim Rashai, the truth of the Bible out to the world, right? And this is another, you know, nail in the coffin for, for organized religion, right? Organized religion has been around for thousands of years, right? But, you know, the end hasn't even come, right? They, why they continue to be there singing, you know, shucking and jiving, collecting your money, you know, talk, telling you how the Lord, you know, wants you to succeed and be rich. You know, they've done nothing to spread the truth of the Bible, man. In fact, they've done the very opposite. They've spread lies and disinformation, right? They've turned many away from the truth. And that's because they've lied about what the Bible truly is. And that truth is that the Bible is simply a book of laws, statues, history ancient history that is and future prophecies of a particular group of people on the earth today that being the negro latinos native indians right that is our history book right and it's our future book right it's our book of life right that book is talking about us right us being the israelites now let's get on to that article that i want to read right because this ultimately is your new gods babylon right Let's go and read this real quick. It says, Government becomes God. J Jacobin satirical cover literally idolizing Biden strikes a nerve. And this is the image that they're talking about. It's this uh, magazine cover that basically shows Biden being surrounded by, you know, the, the politicians of the past. You got, look at, you got Hillary, Obama, and Bill Clinton, those devils as angels above Biden, right? But you got Biden there, uh, you know, in the style of a Greek god with a halo around his head. You got Pelosi and uh, I think Schumer, 
uh, on the right, like angels, you know, Fauci and the experts there, you know, you have, uh, you know, media, all these, you know, basically an idolized view of politics today, right? And at the bottom, you can see, you know, the people just gobbling it up, worshiping it, man, seeing politics as the gods upon earth. And that's ultimately what it is, man. There's a video of Biden creepily giving a fucking kiss on the, on the, on the, the cheek of a, a Israelite woman, right? And she fucking loses it, man. She's all happy there, man. That's, you know, that shows you how lost our people are, man. That they're literally uh, losing their, their shit over being kissed by the devil and stuff, man. But let's read this article. It says, the issue of Jacobin Magazine covering the inauguration features a mock icon complete with a halo around Biden's head. Seraphim-like Clinton and angelic killer drones in the sky. Some don't seem to realize it is satire. The cover for the winter edition of Jack Jacobin, which was previewed hours after Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th U.S. president, mercilessly mocks the U.S. habit of treating its politicians like celebrities. Taking the next logical step, it reimagines the new president as Messiah, borrowing imagery from traditional Christian iconography. Biden's larger-than-life, bare-chested figure is shown surrounded by holy spirits of Twitter and saints in the room, the latter including kneeling Democrat leaders in the, in the U.S. Congress, Dr. Anthony Fauci, fawning journalists, and manager class devotees eagerly consuming the holy scripture for what is probably the latest Barack Obama memoir. The former president himself is shown as a six-winged seraphim bracketed by the likewise angelic Hillary and Bill Clinton, and the trio gazing benignly from the heavens, a crowd of mask-wearing suburban laymen on earth celebrate Biden's ascension. A pair of reaper drones complete the picture, proving a clear hint from the doubt from the doubt for that the image should be taken with a grain of salt. That wasn't enough for some commenters, however, who, who seem to be taking it as a genuine piece of idolatry rather than political commentary. So some of the comments read, abolish God and the government becomes God, J.K. Uh, Chesterton, right? And that's a famous uh, quote, right? Showing how, you know, it's been known that you know, if you get rid of religion, that the government becomes religion, right? And this happened in China. That's like a prime example of it. Uh, you have this that happened in uh, other other places, man. Uh, you know, mostly communist type countries where they removed religion and stuff, right? But that's basically what they're doing over here in America, right? But they're removing religion by the by the way of colluding the message, right? By making all these pedophile priests, um, you know exposing them for what they are, exposing the corruptness of the Catholic and Christian churches, the, the weirdness of Mormon churches, all in the in the Jehovah Witnesses, all that type of stuff, right? This is what America does, right? It it pushes the narrative that religion is crazy and that ultimately that atheist vibe is, is the way to go, right? And that atheist vibe you know, pushes that scientific view, right? Which science isn't bad, but it literally just means you know to know right it's 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 simply knowledge right and the thing with knowledge is that knowledge without wisdom wisdom is what you get from the bible for the most part is is not is nothing but useless facts facts that can be used any which way right another comment reads says so the left went from keep religion out of government at all costs to the government is our religion right and let's see and then cool propaganda will probably end up in the museum of stupid ideas someday so this is what some of the people have been saying right because some people see what's happening right because even though this magazine cover may have been satire the simple idea of introducing the idea right into people's mind even as a joke is enough to let that idea fester in somebody's mind right and, and that's how it works. This is why you see a lot of these devils out there making jokes about the truth. The Simpsons, uh, you know, uh, Stephen Colbert, 
John, Day, you know, uh, John Stewart out there talking about, you know, this is Babylon and that the crowd, wor- you know, he's giving golden idols to worship, right? You know, because they're because they're literally telling you the truth, but they're doing it in joke form, so you don't know, so your subconscious doesn't take it you know, as as a shock, right? This is how the devil gets his his truth in there, man. But let's continue. It says, describing Trump supporters as a cult has become a trope among his Democratic critics, which seem like ironic considering how the very same crowd in the past four years tended to invest emotionally in whoever they hoped would end Trump's presidency. Special counsel Robert Mueller probably received the lion's share of the prayers, though figures like ex-FBI director James Comey and ex-Trump fixer turned critic Michael Cohen basked, basked in some limelight i'm trying and and another comment reads i am trying to will the p tape in into existence and protect robert Mueller with prayer candles you can too right and that's people basically idolizing these people who who they've seen as their saviors as their gods on earth man right because that's what these politicians and and uh you know noblemen these government officials have been turned into, man. They've been turned into demigods here on Earth, man. Look at Obama, man. Obama around the world is still praised, uh, you know, you know, for who he is and what he did, man. What did he do? Man? He gave the alphabet group, you know, incredibly large amounts of rights, and, and those rights were continued uh, by his, his uh, crony Biden, man. Let's continue. It says the Biden uh, he, he, uh, he, hagiography reached an ear-piercing um, pitch during the inauguration week. A CNN host saw a vision of the president-elect's arms embracing America in the light of the Lincoln Memorial, while a New York Times editor confessed to expressing chills upon Biden's landing at Joint Base Andrews. One could be ex- excused for seeing such accounts as quasi-religious. Right? And that's because that's ultimately the, these um, these uh, media entities, right? They're set up there to make you, uh, to push a narrative, right? Because their job is to uh, push propaganda, right? And what ultimately is this going to lead to? Well, it's going to lead to everybody starting to follow the government in a way where, you can, where it's going to be considered a crime to speak against the government, right? We're already starting to see the very beginning of this. And that's because these devils are, you know, in the attempt to shut down free speech and and um, in an oppositional voice, they're going out and they're basically pointing the fingers at themselves. So this way they don't appear to be the uh, bad guys, right? Because, uh, see, this is why they're going after white supremacist groups. But ultimately, that domestic terrorist or the homegrown terrorist, like they're pushing... At first, they're going to target white supremacists, but next is going to go on to the Muslims, and then ultimately religious extremists, which is pretty much the Hebrew Israelites, man. You know, we're already on the FBI watch list. But the point being is that this ultimately will be it will be something that will trigger uh, the the prophecies that that talk about how we shall be hated amongst men for the sake of the truth of the Bible, right? For for the sake of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, right? And this ultimately is what what uh, was shown in the book of Esther, right? When when uh, Haman, who was a so-called Jew, right? But, you know, when the Malachite, right? Which the Am- Amalekites are the top tribe of the nation of Edom, right? Today, you would know them as the so-called Jewish people that live in Isra- Israel today, right? The, the, these are the people who rule the world, along with their Caucasian, other Caucasian tribes, brothers, right? But this is a man we hear named Haman, who was, you know, one of the top people uh, of Amalek at that time, but he basically got close to the ear, the, the, the ears of the king and basically started talking shit about the Israelites, man, made it seem like we were the bad people, man. So much so that the king agreed to Haman's request of uh, you know, of, of basically killing off all the, the, the Jews, the Israelites in that time, right? Because he made us seem like we were evil-ass people. 
right? Now, let's go ahead and read that example so you can see just how these devils, they, how they did it, how these so-called Jews, these devils, you know, perpetrated this lie back then. This is basically what they're going to do today. But let's read this. This is uh, Esther 3 and 8. And Haman said unto King Azarias, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the province of thy kingdom. Right? And Haman, remember, Haman's that uh, Amalekite, right? That so-called Jew talking to the, the king, right? And those people that he's talking about are the Israelites, right? The so-called, in this case, the so-called Negroes. Um, you know that, and there were some Latinos and Native Indians amongst them, but for the most part, uh, they were talking about the uh, the, the southern uh, nation here, man. But let's continue to read. It says, "There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them." Right? And that's what they're going to say about us, man. Right? These, these Israelites, they don't want to take those jabs. They, they're going to make everybody, they're making everybody sick. They're putting everybody at risk. They don't want to follow the government's laws. They don't want to follow the, the mandatory, you know, laws that have been set forth by Biden, the president, or Fauci, the, you know, the, the head of the C, CDC, right? They're going to start blaming us and making us seem like we're the problem, man. Verse 9, or Salaki. Uh, yeah uh, verse 9 if it please the king let it be written that they may be destroyed and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business and bring it into the king's treasuries Treasuries, and the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite right and this word here, the Haggagite, the Jew, uh, wait, the Jew's enemies, right? And the word Agagite here goes back to Agag, right? Because Agag, when you get into uh, the um, the uh, the scriptures, Agag was the was the, basically the great 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 grandson of, of Esau, man, right? Uh, his, you know, Agag's father was Amalek. So, uh, being the first child of Esau, they would ultimately got the blessing, right? Well, these Agagites is another way that you would, is another true name for the so-called Jew today, right? But notice how it tells you here. It says, the Jew's enemy, right? Because even back then, it was very clear that these so-called Jews were the enemies of the so-called Negroes, right? And the Israelites, for that example, right? So, hear that again, people. The so-called Jewish people of today, the people who dwell in the land of Israel, the Israelis, right? The Agagites are the enemies of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, right? Even though there's, you know, exceptions to the rules, you have, you know, like Kamala Harris, man, right? She's married to a so-called Jew, her enemy, right? And that's exactly, you know... It's, it's, you know, I don't even want to digress, man. But this, this you know, you, you, you get the picture, man. You know, these devils, these snakes have hidden themselves so well, man, that our people think that these people are our friends. Back to the, to the verse, verse 11. And the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Right? And look at this, man. Look at what people like this are doing today, man. So, you know, Bill Gates. I wouldn't be surprised, man, if that guy was a so-called uh, Jew, right? A Malachite, man. Because remember, these are Malachites, man. They are tricky, man. They were literally changing their religious stance and pretend to be Christians just so that way they could, uh, you know, get, you know, uh, follow their plans. You know, this goes all the way back to back when uh, they were uh, in the uh, rape. What is it? The... When the Arabs world, the, the the Ottoman Turk era, era or something like that, when the Arabs were in power and stuff like that, man, they forced all the uh, the Jews of that time, the, the, the so-called Jews who were pretending to be Jews, they forced them to become Arabs, right? They, and they did. Right? This is why, oh, I'm sorry, not the Arabs, the, the Turkish people, man. The 
Ottoman Empire, right? This is why you had so you have so many Amalekites, so-called Jews, amongst the, uh, the 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 Turkish people today, right? But they they practice Islam, or at least they they say they practice Islam, right? But they only did that for political reasons, right? And this is ultimately like name it today. Like I said, man, look look what Bill Gates is doing. He's buying up all this farmland to starve you people out. He's paying all this money out of his own wealth, right? The Bill Melinda Gates Fund, right? And all these people, man, are putting up all this money to make sure you Israelites, you Negro, Latino, Native Indians out there take that jab, right? You guys get the care they want to give you. And what is that care? They want to put you to death, right? So like like the tells you here, man, these and it says the people also are given unto Haman also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. And what does what do these Edomites want to do with thee? Well, they want to take you off the face of the earth today, man. That's what seemeth best best to them, man. So and what's gonna be well, one of the ways that they're going to do this? Well, Darnie here talks about it now. Kathy Gibber just came out, I think, today, asking Bill uh, Biden has if he's declared martial law, right? Because uh, all the troops that are are not leaving Washington D.C. and all the these uh, talk, all this talk about domestic terrorism and, and targeting half of the U.S. with all these new laws are, are being talked about and are going to be pushed. Right? It's coming, people. Martial law is coming. And there's going to be some hard times, man. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, right? Now, like I said, man, the Lord is going to save the children of Israel, but he's only going to save one third of them because two thirds, they're going to be too busy watching rap videos, you know, getting lost in fucking drugs, getting lost in sports, movies, the, you know, all the other, you know, folly that goes on here in Babylon, man, social media, their the college degrees, they're, you know, making money and all this type of stuff, man, so much so they're gonna, they're gonna, you know, think that they're, you know, following the prize, but they're gonna, they're ultimately, they've taken their eyes off of the real prize, that being, immortality, salvation from the coming mass death, the end of the world, which is soon upon us, people. This is why everything that is going on right now is taking place, because we are in the last days of the last days, and these Edomites, right, they know that their kingdom is coming down, and they're ultimately, you know, setting up their chess pieces to, 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 you know, start that silent war against you Israelites, man, they're, they're enemies, because again, though these low-level Edomites pretend to be our friends, we've got to remember it's the high-level Edomites that know who they are. They know who you are, right? This is why they're planning to, you know, kill you. So hopefully this video was edifying. But until next time, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kodesh, the Lord is my teachers, the apostles and elders, the great millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.